What's going on guys, it's Jake here, and in this video, I'll be talking about options trading and why you should be aware and watch this video before you actually start trading options because trading options might seem super lucrative and might seem super attractive to the average investor, but there are a lot of important things that you should know and also sort of just kind of beware of options trading. You could potentially lose a ton of money doing so versus just normal long-term investing. But before I get into the video, new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. I talk about things like investing, the stock market, personal finance entrepreneurship so if you're interested in that kind of stuff and you are not yet subscribed definitely consider hitting that subscribe button but anyways getting right into it so why i'm actually specifically making this video is because someone comments on one of my videos talking about a subreddit post which is called wall street bets which is pretty much entirely about people doing options trading and man oh man i took a look at this post or this subreddit whatever the hell you want to call it and it was pretty crazy to see how many people are losing tens of thousands of dollars to putting like these naked puts out there on the Robinhood app on margin and are just literally losing and in debt from doing these ridiculous options trading. Now, I personally don't do any sort of options trading. I probably never will. And I oftentimes speak out against it. And I'm going to explain this video part by part why I think it is a little bit silly to trade options. So quickly, we're going to do a bit of a story and a bit of a history lesson on options trading because I think it's especially important to understand where it came from and what it is to then kind of formulate your own opinion on what it is today. So options trading and things like options Options trading has been around since the ancient Greeks. Ancient Greeks used to bet on olive harvest or something like that, and that was sort of a form of options trading. But in more modern times, there's a man by the name of Jesse Livermore, who was one of the first kind of people who really started options trading in terms of making bets on stock market movements. Jesse grew up in the early uh, 1900s, and specifically, he started things called bucket shops in America during the 1920s, where people would go to make bets on the stock market. So very similar to options trading, Jesse was sort of like a brokerage or almost like an options boogie, kind of like the middleman. And he made a ton of money betting against people who were trying to make bets about stock price movements. So for example, someone would go up to Jesse and say, hey, I think stock XYZ is going to go up to $100 by this date. And he'd say, no, you're crazy. I don't think that's going to happen. And they would bet, I don't know, five, ten dollars let's say, against that. And then most of the time, Jesse would take home the cash because it's, of course, almost impossible to randomly predict price movements, regardless of what type of analysis you are doing. And a lot of studies actually prove that, which I'll talk about later on in the video. So why I actually think this story of Jesse Livermore and where stocks options trading actually originated is important because it's very similar to what we see today. So if we compare Jesse and the people who are making bets against him to options writers and options traders today, I think they're very competitive and I think it's pretty obvious which side you want to be on. So with Jesse's, let's take a look at him. So Jesse was the person making the, or not making the bets. He was the person actually taking the bets and he was the one making the most money. So again, today there's the options writers, which would be Jesse, and there's the options traders, which would be, you know, you or maybe someone else, you know, making these options bets. And honestly, if you're looking at the story of Jesse, you would much, much rather be the options writer because you're the one that's probably making the most money. And that oftentimes is actually the case. So if we actually fast forward 50 years from Jesse, the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, CBOE, was created in the 70s and was focused around legal options trading because people were doing this beforehand in there's people like Jesse and people all throughout you know, the next 50 years or so that was doing this kind of stuff and they kind of said, hey, we gotta put a cap on this. We gotta actually make this legal because it's not a bad idea. Now with more modern and organized and legal options trading, there's a ton of different things you can do, but most often it's pretty much a call or a put. So you're either saying that a stock price is going to go up to a certain amount by a certain date or you're saying that a stock price is going to go down by a certain amount to a certain date. Now going back to that Jesse Livermore story again, what do, would you rather be? Would you rather be Jesse or the schmuck making the bets against them. Well, I know I personally would much rather be Jesse. Now, of course, I'm not gonna go out there and start my own brokerage and start all this options trading and try to get people to trade options with me because that'd be absolutely crazy. But either way, I think that's kind of showing that you would much, much rather not be the person making the bets or the people writing the option, or not people writing the options, the people trading the options because you're very, very likely going to lose money. So traditionally with brokerages, brokerages, you know, they used to only really make money off of fees and off of expenses and, you know, doing a fee every time you buy or sell a stock or doing a fee, you know, every year or something like that. But then in the 70s, when options trading came out, they kind of said to each other, hey, rather than making only a little bit
little bit of people's money off of fees and interest and stuff like that. Let's try and take all of their money through options trading. And then, you know, the brokerage, you might be thinking, well, how on earth are they going to trick people into doing that? I really truthfully think options trading was one of the best ways out there. Not that this is some crazy like options trading conspiracy theory. This is literally what happens every day and actually how brokerages or options writers literally make money. Now, you might be asking to yourself, why on earth would anyone ever want to trade options? I think there's uh, a couple reasons why people want to trade options and why they look so attractive to investors. So the very first reason is because you could potentially make a ton of money off of options trading. You really can. In some cases, it could literally be a limitless amount of money because a stock could potentially go up an infinite amount. Now, of course, stock prices don't actually go up infinitely. And honestly, quite often, they don't go up very much and don't go down very much. But in theory, you're options price could continue to go up and up and up. And if you're making a certain options call, you could potentially make an infinite amount of money. Now, of course, you never would make that. And more often than not, you're not actually making money at all. But either way, that could make it somewhat attractive to a somewhat naive investor or a somewhat naive options trader. And another reason why I think options trading is so lucrative and so attractive is because it is much easier and costs less than actually day trading. So with day trading, you have to actually buy whole shares of stocks and buy them at the current market price and sell them you know whenever you want to sell them but with options trading you could potentially be spending significantly less money than you would be buying whole entire shares of stock and be potentially making much much more money now of course the thing you have to look at right here is are people actually making money off of options trading and who's really making the money here the options writer or the options trader and more often than not it is the options writer now the one thing with the options writer they are potentially limited to how much money they can make because it's not like the options trader where you can make an infinite amount of money the options writer can only only make as much as the premium that they are giving out. But the odds are typically overwhelmingly on the side of the options writer. A study in the late 1990s, according to an article on Investopedia, found that a little over 75% of all options held to expiration expired worthless. This study excluded option positions that were closed out or exercised prior to expiration date. Even so, for every option contract that was in the money at expiration, there was three that were out of the money and therefore worthless is a pretty telling statistic. So with that being said, it's a pretty it's pretty obvious and it's pretty glaringly obvious through these statistics that I just said and just through this whole story with Jesse and options trading that it's probably not a good idea to trade options and more often than not, you're not even going to make money and the difference between options trading and just regular trading is that with options trading, you can literally lose all of your money that you were putting in investing but if you're just doing normal trading, even just simply day trading, it doesn't have to be long-term investing, you're never going to lose all of your money because it's impossible for a stock price to actually go to zero dollars, unlike options trading, where you could potentially not only lose all of your money that you're investing, but potentially more. Because again, if you're doing an opposite, if you're doing shorting or something like that, a stock price could potentially infinitely go up. But of course, that's only in theory. That's not actually going to happen in real life. So overall, with options trading, uh, it can be eye candy. It really is the eye candy of trading because it's one of the most potentially lucrative ways to invest out there. And I'm sure you see people blowing up ads or maybe not so much anymore. I guess people are more focused on like Shopify ads and like uh, cryptocurrency ads and stuff like that now but either way it is very lucrative it, it can be very attractive but at the end of the day is it really worth it and I think you really got to look would you rather be Jesse Livermore the bookie or would you rather be the schmuck that's making the bets but my main rule with investing and trading options when people ask me if I do it or if they should do it or anything like that is simply if you like the stock buy it if you don't like it don't buy it i don't think you need to overcomplicate it any more than that but of course this video is just for entertainment and education purposes only i'm not a financial advisor i'm not a financial expert or anything like that and you're definitely investing or trading at your own risk but anyway guys this is really it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did definitely leave a like below and also let me know in the comment section what you guys think and also if you totally disagree with me and you're like jake you're an idiot i'm a millionaire on office on options trading you know what gerald 462 go ahead the dislike button's right there i don't really care if if you disagree with me or not this is simply my biased opinion but other than that guys like i said before if you're new to the channel definitely consider subscribing if you're interested in the stock market investing entrepreneurship finance things like that because i post content about that all the time but other than that guys i hope you enjoyed the video thank you guys for watching